On November 15th, farm leaders from all across the United States are going to be meeting in Corning, Iowa, where the home office of the NFO is. The NFO and the National Farmers Union are jointly co-hosting this meeting. It's a by invitation to farm leaders. Yvonne Woodman, president of National Farmers, is here, and I'm going to ask him to describe the meeting and tell what its purposes are. Phil, in the past, farmers have been invited into meetings sponsored by chemical companies or a university, and they have uh, sat and listened to uh, what those people want them to hear and outline what they propose be done in agriculture. There has never, to my knowledge, been a national agriculture meeting uh, held of active producers, those who are literally involved, coming together of this magnitude. We will be discussing the farm credit system and its impact on agriculture. We'll also be discussing the farm bill because the direction will be pretty well cast at that time. We'll be discussing what's in it for agriculture. And then, of course, we must discuss the market and its impact on agriculture and how to protect ourselves in the marketplace. And we want to appeal to those uh, who are the mid-ranged mid producers, those who uh, have committed their lives to agriculture as a vocation. We would hope uh, middle-aged uh, producers, certainly recognizing the need for the uh, older generation of farmers as well. The Farmers Union and the NFO are co-hosts, but will it also include, well, people across other organization lines or perhaps political party lines? We're going to cross all organizational lines and all political uh, lines as well. We're talking about agriculture now. We're not talking about organizations and, and political parties. We're going to be dealing strictly with agriculture producers. But you know, we talk about 30% of the farmers being in some varying degree of financial stress. And if something is not done very quickly, you will see that number escalate. And we must not allow that to happen. We must simply uh, avoid a continuation. We must reverse the uh, psychology that's talking about foreclosure, bankruptcies, liquidations, this type of thing. And I think farmers today, more of them than, than ever before, recognize that they cannot avoid what's happening and they are going to commit themselves to some direction. And we simply want to give them uh, a plan, give them some leadership, and move positively uh, towards solving the problem. Devon Woodland, president of NFO. He announced the November 15th Invitational Meeting for Farm Leaders at Corning, Iowa. Crews in the country. Jack Cruz speaks to us today from the Ken Hyman Farm near Howells, Nebraska. As Mr. Hyman explains part of his operation to Jack, he refers to an NFO cattle rep whom he calls Clancy. That's Don Russell, whose nickname is Clancy Russell. And now to Jack Cruz and Ken Hyman at Howells, Nebraska. Ken, uh... Would you give us some of your impressions? As far as the fat cattle division today, we have a good salesman in our area or cattle buyer. And uh, <clears throat> he uses four to five packers on a bunch of your cattle that are whatever quality in that. He might use one packer for one kind, one bunch, and might use two, three different packers on another bunch. And uh, I think as far as using a salesman like this, he watches the market a little bit closer than what, he, than what we can watch it. For instance, the spring, what happened to me, uh, I called him one evening, his first time I met Clancy, and uh, he gave me a bit of a dollar in the beef, and which I felt, I thought the market was going to go up, and he says, no way, he says, this market's going to drop, and I didn't listen to him, and five days later, we had $94 cattle in the beef, and so I got nervous, and I gave him a ring, and, and uh, was ready to sell that, and oh, he says, hang on, this market's coming back. So, I think it was about within a week's time, he got me $97 for the cattle, which was 50, to 50 cents in the beef underneath the high that it got at that point. Then I turned around about three and a half weeks later, and he had 95 in the beef, and I thought, well, that wasn't enough, so I hung on again. And what happened to me? About a week later, the cattle were 90 cents. And so I give him a ring again. Well, he says, hang on again. He says, this thing may have an upturn to it. So it wasn't, I guess, a week later, he got me 95 for these cattle again. So what I'm trying to say is I think these other, using somebody else, that they have more of an insight on this market than what we have today. This is a typical farm operation. I believe you've heard some of the chickens, the roosters in the background. 
His cattle are in a lot. He's got a wagon full of chopped hay. Uh, this is truly an American farm. There's a black Labrador retriever standing right next to me. Uh, farming, as we know it, it's been a good life. I hope we can stay here. Cruise in the country. That point about how NFO bargainers know the market, in addition to the careful charting of trends and projected behavior, NFO also can affect the market because national farmers' transactions are recognized as volume supplying to fit specific needs. When the regional directors of the NFO dairy program were meeting recently at the home office, Don Mack interviewed them for Here's Info. First, he talked to Lou Emery of the New England states about a new dairy contract they've signed. Lou, how is it going out there in collective bargaining in New England? We have just recently had a contract uh, ratified by our producers in the New England area that will allow us to move uh, flush milk in the spring in, in a manner that we feel will benefit all of that area. We have for a long time uh, been at the mercy of, of the buyer during that, those flush periods in the spring. Uh, this contract uh, is, a, is a true balancing contract. It is a year-round contract. Uh, we supply shot milk in the fall, uh, and then when we are in that flush state, uh, we can put more milk into this contract of February through June. Uh, it's, it's a contract that I believe we can, can go into the country and, and participate in the whole program and make everything stronger. Now I'm visiting with Walt Albers from the state of Ohio. Walt, uh, how are the young people in Ohio looking towards collective bargaining? The young people in Ohio are really coming alive and really wanting to get involved uh, with agriculture now because of the economic situation that uh, we're in. We just came off the Farm Science Review, and the interest that we really had there was the young people wanting to get involved. They've looked at all the different uh, farm organizations, and they're really coming to the conclusion that... Uh, our farm organization has what they want, and that's working together to get a price. Are they putting a lot of this production together? Yes, they're talking about doing a lot of the legwork, and they're big feeders, they're young people, and they know that they need a price right now because they're really hurting. I'm talking with Gene Paul, Area Dairy Director for the state of Minnesota. Gene, how have the follow-up meetings been going on after the cash flow meetings? Don, they've been going very, very well, and we had a, a tremendous interest, particularly from the younger farmers, who attended the cash flow meetings. And we have had experienced a tremendous sign up as far as the dairy program is concerned. How's the increase in your volume of milk? During the month of September, our volume was about 58% uh, ahead of uh, September of a year ago. Gene Paul of Minnesota. Don Mack for Here's Info talked to three of NFO's regional dairy directors. Lou Emery of the New England States, Walter Albers of Ohio, and Gene Paul of Minnesota. Today we present Dan Graff of the Livestock Division National Farmers. I understand, Dan, that you have an update report on uh, volume in the collection points. Yes, Phil, I really do. I've got good news throughout most of the Midwest, including the states of Nebraska, Iowa, and Minnesota, uh, and the state of Missouri. Okay, let's hear it. Uh, both the hog and the slaughter cattle division set volume records in September, exceeding records made three and four years ago. New collection points opened included two in Minnesota, one in Missouri, one in Nebraska, and one here in Iowa. Howells, Nebraska set a national record of moving over 10,000 head in August, and St. Cloud, Minnesota moved an unprecedented five loads of cattle and five loads of hogs in the first week in October. The Slaughter Cattle's newest optional program on Holstein replacement calves delivered their first contracts in September. The calves are grown by the producer to 275 pounds, at which time our buyer takes delivery and trucks the calves to Texas feedlots, where they are finished or fed to finished weights. I've been talking with Dan Graff of the Livestock Division National Farmers. We take you to the actual scene at Des Moines recently when a half million dollar check from singer Willie Nelson was presented to Devon Woodland, who chairs the board of directors of the Family Farm Defense Fund. This board will administer the expenditures. Woodland's statement, we think, clarifies the purpose of the fund and tells what it can and can't do. The purpose is to initiate litigation, if needs be, 
Give advice and training to rural attorneys dealing with the issue. Be involved in rural in rule making that affects the farm credit system. And to protect the rights of owner borrowers in the farm credit system. We can't raise enough money to lift the debt burden that farmers are carrying, nor can we provide attorneys for each farmer or rancher. And so to initiate legal action, we're going to challenge the abuse. We're going to challenge some of the decisions that affect thousands and thousands of farmers. This is the battleground that we have self-chosen. Devon Woodland, chairman of the board of directors who will administer the Family Farm Defense Fund. The members include Ed Anderson of the National Grange, Cy Carpenter of the Farmers Union, Bishop Ed O'Rourke of National Catholic Rural Life Conference, Tim Rage of the Farm Crisis Committee, and Sidney Beck of Women Involved in Farm Economics. They stress their determination to spend the money for the most effective legal defense of agriculture with class actions at key points where legal loopholes need to be plugged. Remember the 1985 convention starting December 2nd it will be at Des Moines. The speakers will be John Conley, the country music star, Cy Carpenter, president of the Farmers Union, Sidney Beck of Women Involved in Farm Economics, and Ed Anderson of the National Grange. The sessions will be at the new convention center at Des Moines. Other features of this year's convention, the commodity sessions will be held sequentially instead of concurrently, so the delegates won't have to choose among those commodities in which that delegate might be interested. The grassroots and politics uh, ball will be at the Savory Hotel, Grand Ballroom, and the final night's dance will be at the Marriott Hotel. There will be no county informational tape for December because of the convention, but your accounts will be credited. This report compiled and edited by Don Mack. I'm Phil Allen. See you at the convention.